Again, I'd like to welcome everyone to the quarter four 2017 uh, U-Portal briefing. Um, we've got a lot of good content to cover for the previous quarter. And, but first of all, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the team. Uh, as I'd mentioned that there is one person that's missing from the slide, and that would be myself. Uh, as I had mentioned, I am transitioning off the of Portals program and projects here, uh, actually after this meeting. And I'd like to introduce to everyone Allison DuBose. Uh, she'll be the project manager here for the Portals program. Allison has been with the company for over 13 years. And if you haven't um, been privy to having conversations with Allie or having general discussions, you'll find that she's a very energetic and personable person that is easy to work with and just a great person overall. So I'd like to welcome Allie to the team. Um, the old hats on the team, as I like to call them, is Drew Wills, which most of you are familiar with. Benito Gonzalez is still with us. Chris Beach is the newbie, uh, but he's now tenured at about six months at this point. And then we've got Christian Murphy, who has been with the Portals team for well over a year now. Time flies when we're having fun, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right, next slide, please. All right, so let's just cover a couple of housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, please keep your phones on mute. Um, we highly encourage questions, but please post them to the chat room. If we can't answer a question, um, we'll follow up accordingly. And as I'd mentioned, that this briefing will be available on the Unicon YouTube channel and also post as a link by the blog post that will be related to the quarter four uh, 2017 uPortal briefing. Um, so let's have some fun and let's learn a little bit while we're at it. So here's the agenda for today. Um, we'll cover sustaining engineering efforts from quarter four 2017. We'll cover recent uPortal conferences that have occurred. Um, we'll dive a little deeper into uPortal Home and uPortal Start. And then we'll finish up with a conversation regarding uPortal 5.1. So without further ado, Christian, go ahead and take it away, sir. Thanks much, Stephen. Hi, folks. Um, so this quarter was a pretty exciting one in terms of sustaining engineering. Um, we've had three uPortal releases. Um, we resolved 438 issues, um, merged in 136 pull requests, and spent over um, 262 hours of sustaining engineering hours making these efforts possible. Um, many thanks out to our sustaining engineering subscribers for helping fund this effort and to the community members who have helped put together some of these floor requests as well. Excellent. Excellent. Good job, everyone. So, a, uh, some highlights. Um, uPortal 5 was officially released this past quarter, um, as well as two follow up patch releases with some additional fixes and stability improvements. Um, we did a grooming of the uPortal Aperio tracker for the issues. Um, we cleared out a number of issues that were no longer relevant with the new uPortal 5 architecture, um, cleaning about, about 300 of those 400 issues were um, grooming from the backlog. Um, we've also migrated a majority of the portlets to use Java 8 now, which will improve the performance and open the door for Java 9 migration in the near future. And we did some Java library upgrades to improve security and stability across uPortal. Up next, I'll be handing it off to Benito to give a highlight of some of the conference work we've been doing over the past quarter. Take it away, Benito. Hi, everybody. Uh, I just wanted to go over developer days. Boy, was that a hit. Had a great time. That was uh, last December at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. Um, and a big thank you to UW-Madison uh, for covering the fees. There was no conference fees for that event. If you went, I hope you agree with me that uh, it was an excellent opportunity to uh, interact with other uPortal developers and to uh, move the project along. Uh, the content there, we did a little bit of pre-planned presentations, kind of some working sessions. There is uh, very short workshops and uh, lots of unconference style uh, planning at the beginning of, of the day so we could cover topics that were of interest to people who attended. Um, and of course, lots of opportunities to um, have meals and, and interact with uh, the whole community that was uh, present. It was, it was a great time. Very excited that, that it happened. 
Um, some of the highlights, uh, there was quite a few. It was, it was challenging to get them down uh, to a small list, uh, but here, here's kind of the highlights that, that I wanted to bring to your attention if you didn't attend. Um, University of Edinburgh's notifications uh, project, that's something that's kind of a, a back-end service that's going to integrate with your portal. It's an Aperio incubating project. Um, so we had two presentations, one high level and one uh, technical on that during the, uh, the dev days uh, time there. Uh, there's also a show and tell of different portals. Um, we also had our uPortal technical call kickoff. That's the first one. We've had another one since, and hopefully we'll continue to have those on a monthly basis. Uh, during that call, we talked about kind of front end technologies, uh, such as Lodash and template JavaScript libs, um, and also highlighted that there's Angular JS in portlets and soon to be other technologies and some of the upcoming uh, content uh, projects, uh, portlets and soffits. And of course, Drew did a, a hour and a half workshop on uPortal 5, helping people just get spun up on that. It's pretty quick and easy. And we'll see some of that later in this presentation. Next slide. Maria from UW Madison also gave us a basic user experience for developers. That was great. Lots of slides, a lot of information. It wasn't about developers, uh, you know, technical work such as programming, but it, it helped to bring us back up to the user and kind of see what, what they're interested in. Of course, we brought up uh, soffits. Um, hopefully, we'll see a lot more this year about soffits. We also uh, discussed the uPortal ecosystem intake process as opposed to going through the whole a perio incubation process. We have this lighter process we're working on. Keep an eye on the mailing list to see more information regarding the intake process. We already have one project in Contrib, uh, uPortal Contrib, and a second one that should be there pretty soon. I believe Christian's uh, working on that second project. Uh, Christian, did you get that uh, into uh, Contrib? So that one, um, it's in progress, I believe. There's going to be about one more day before the 72-hour um, wait period is over, and then that'll be moved over to uPortal Contrib. So it will be there shortly. Awesome. Sounds good. We touched a little bit on the last day on architecture and microservices, but earlier in the week we, we had uh, Lauren from BYU present on securing RESTful APIs. That was uh, a big hit as well. I know a couple of people contacted him while I was there and, and even after the conference uh, about access to his documentation. He did a great job, so I really appreciate that. It was, it was a great time. Next slide. Uh, so kind of the feedback we got from attendees was that, um, you know, it, it was a great event and I'd like to see it happen again. Um, there was also a lot of interest in uPortal 5. We're really excited about that. uPortal 5 is, is really the future and we hope everyone jumps on it as soon as practical. Um, it, it was a, a great time to see each other between the major conferences, and we're already talking about Dev Days uh, for 2018. Uh, potentially, if, if everything works out, we may have it in Gilbert uh, at Unicon. So uh, that's it uh, uh, for ePortal Dev Days. Uh, kicking it off over to Drew, talk about other conferences coming up. Yeah, hey, uh, this is Drew Wills. Uh, we continuing with the uh, topic of conferences in uPortal, I wanted to take a, a brief moment to talk about a part of the community that isn't normally front and center, you know, I guess in, in our thoughts, but the, uh, you know, French higher education adopters of uPortal uh, have a joint ASUP and a Perio event coming up in two weeks. The Presentations will be on February 6th. It's being held at the, oh, I'll butcher this, uh, Université Paris, Paris Descartes. My apologies, everyone. The content of the presentations on that day, uh, you know, are topics and uh, platforms that we know and love in Aperio. You'll see, uh, you know, learning at Linux. There is a, um, presentation on Grouper, one on Aperio OAE, and a significant, you know, good-sized presentation on uPortal 5, uh, which I have the delightful opportunity to, to give. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to that. 
I hope to uh, you know connect with those folks and encourage them to uh, look favorably upon the work that we're doing in U Portal 5 and move aggressively to evaluate and we hope implement it. Go ahead. Still on the topic of conferences, of course, we have the big one, uh, Open Aperio, uh, you know, the 2018 installment in Montreal uh, this year. Go ahead, yeah. So this will be in the early part of June, June 3rd through 7th at the Delta Marriott Hotel, again in Montreal, Quebec. And best news of all, the call for proposals period is still open. You still have time. You, you know, from this moment, you still have essentially half a week, two and a half business days uh, to get organized around uh, proposing presentations for Open Aperio uh, and submitting them. You can submit them at that link right there, but uh, it's, you know, it's sort of difficult to click on a slide deck or a video. You can easily find that link in all the reminder emails that you've been receiving over the last several weeks. And we, uh, you know, at Unicon and in the community generally, we encourage you in uh, the strongest possible terms to attend. The uPortal community within Aperio, perhaps more than any other, the uPortal community uh, takes uh, the, the conference as an opportunity to come together and to prioritize and to compare notes, to create opportunities for collaboration and really kind of lay down the roadmap for the coming year. Uh, if you would like your voices heard uh, in that process, and um, you know, even if you wouldn't, I would, I would really like your voices heard, I think we all would, then we encourage you uh, to come to this conference, you know, to see the presentations. Uh, they're all, you know, typically uh, of a high quality. Uh, to participate in those conversations and to help us uh, identify what we need to be doing with you portal to make it compelling and relevant, you know, for the next 15 years. So uh, take that very, very seriously. Lastly, before I move off this topic, uh, you should be aware that uh, you portal, you know, per usual in its sort of customary way, the you portal communi uh, community community will be holding collaboration days uh, after the conference. This is primarily Thursday, but for people who, you know, sort, sort of continue, who carry on in Montreal into Friday, it will also be on Friday. Uh, we will be getting together as a community and uh, doing some of the things I just talked about. It will be, um, you know, there will be an agenda, there will be a plan for our conversations together, but it will be slightly less structured than the formal conference. Uh, we are gathering those plans even now uh, at, the, at the Google document that you can find by following this URL uh, in the bottom bullet. Uh, planning is already underway. People are, you know, it's early, but people are declaring uh, their intent to be there and posting about the topics that they want to discuss, the decisions they want to make, the things they want to collaborate on. So please engage this process. Please put your name uh, down on the document. Tell us you're going to be there, and let's, uh, let's make this amazing. We normally get a lot out of that, uh, a lot out of that experience. And others who've done it before will, will tell you the same. All right, next slide. Uh, all right, and that's me. I think back to Benito, right? Yes, sir. Hi, everybody. Um, so one of the uh, efforts we're looking at is bringing uPortal home into uPortal Start. So just a quick refresher, a uPortal um, Start is the repo where you configure uPortal. No longer do you pull down the source code for uPortal. You start with uPortal Start, and you can customize uPortal from there. Um, and then we have uPortal Home, which is an AngularJS based front end um, that kind of has a card strategy to surface the content in the portal. 
uh, an easier UI to work with um, by modern developers who are more familiar with things like AngularJS. Uh, Andrew Petro from UW Madison has this pull request in to uPortal start. Um, Drew and I have kind of kicked around and, and helped a little bit with that pull request as well. And you can find that pull request at the URL at the bottom of the slide. So the effort here, the focus is to try to get uPortal Home integrated into uPortal as easily as possible. So you could just set a property um, and you're off and running with at least the basis of uPortal Home, if you're interested. So how do you get, go ahead, next slide. Uh, how do you get this? Um, so you really need to pull down this pull request uh, currently. You can do a, a get fetch to update your local repo. That origin um, could be called upstream or something else, depending on how you reference the uh, main uPortal uh, start project in your local repo. Um, and then you want to just create a branch off of that add uPortal home branch in, in, in uPortal start. You do have to edit global properties, and there is a uPortal home enabled equals false with the little you know, hashtag in front, it's a comment, so you just uncomment that and change it to true. And then clean portal init, Tomcat start. One of the beautiful beautiful uh, parts of uPortal 5 is how easy it is to just get going. Uh, and there you go. At this point, once you open up your browser and hit that URL, your typical uPortal URL, you'll be redirected to that uh, front end. It's, uh, it's really nice, and we uh, hope you appreciate how simple it is to uh, turn this on. Next slide. Uh, and so here it is with a basic theme, uh, a uPortal theme out of the box. Um, you've probably seen this more with uh, red from UW Madison, but here's the uh, Perio version. Um, there is a little bit of tweaking that needs to, uh, to be done uh, to further improve this initial demo. Um, but certainly, this is the basis of, of what we're going to go forward with. Um, uh, so there's the blue that we see, and we just really need to start filling out some of the content for those cards. Um, so why haven't we merged it yet? Uh, really, the, the main uh, blocker is uh, WCAG 2.0 uh, AA uh, conformance. Uh, we really want to hold on to that with uPortal, uh, and, and so once uPortal Home can meet that standard, then we, I think we're really close to merging. There's some data files that also need to be tweaked. As, as you saw on the previous slide, there's some work there on the content. Um, that doesn't look as challenging as making sure that things are WCAG 2.0 AA compliant. So kind of that's where we're at. Love to have some help on that pull request. If anyone's interested in either testing um, for accessibility, or helping um, fill out some of the data files, that'd be great. Just let us know on the uh, mailing list and we'll certainly point you in the right direction. So that's kind of where we're at with that effort. It's looking good, it's very promising, we're getting close. So hopefully everyone's excited about it. Next. Uh, yeah, so this is Drew again. Uh, the next section, I think the sort of last significant section of what we have today uh, covers Interesting bits about uPortal Next. Uh, you know, uPortal 5.0 is not the end. We continue to innovate. Uh, we continue to be interested in in new things. You know, so we have not stopped uh, working on uPortal. There's a list here, seven items. You can see a number of these are already done and merged uh, into the master branch uh, of uPortal. So they're ready to be a part of the uPortal 5.1 release. Uh, there are a couple of these that are in progress. Uh, they, they are items that uh, currently have at least one related uh, pull request in the uPortal repo. Uh, and then a couple things that are on our radar. So, you know, this list is great, seven items. Some of these things. Most of these things we have additional slides for coming up, so we'll cover them in greater detail, which is probably exactly what we should do next. And I think it's Christian first. Hello, hello. So one of the improvements that we've made in the um, uPortal 
is we found that many universities um, have a situation where based on roles or certain conditions, the number of portlets in different columns in a layout um, can be kind of disjointed. Um, this um, video kind of shows that where one of the columns is completely missing, the other ones are very um, much longer than the others. So with uPortal 5, we've included a new layout style um, called the flexible layout. And with this one, um, uPortal will generate the columns for you. You just give it the order that content should appear in. And based on the screen size and roles, it will automatically figure out how to put the content into a fairly attractive layout um, and be able to um, responsibly grow and shrink the number of columns that appear on the screen at any given time. Um, this is already merged into uPortal and will be available as part of uPortal 5.1. Um, we hope that a lot of people will be checking this out. Uh, special thanks on this to State Center Community College and UCR who helped sponsor this effort. Um, many thanks. Your contributions helped made this possible. And I'll hand it back to Drew now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, um, I hope I see Paul Renfro on the, um, on the call from uh, State Center. Uh, I want to mention before I move on, I want to mention very quickly that these uh, layout options are already, they already enjoy 100% uh, import export support and they are already have um, uh, UI configuration support in the customized drawer. Uh, and for those who are uh, uPortal old timers and you know, know a little bit about how things work under the hood, uh, technically this is a one column layout, uh, all of these. The, it, it uses CSS Flexbox to arrange portlets in a single uPortal column into a grid. All right, yeah, go ahead. All right, next item on the list uh, for 5.1 and beyond. You know what, uh, I apologize, this was merged into 5.0 as well. This will be uh, a part of the 5.05 release uh, because it's just documentation. Uh, but it's neat documentation, uh, it, it's pretty spiffy. Uh, we've added support for Swagger uh, to uPortal. Uh, it is, the, there's barely anything you need to do. It just, um, you know, works. It, it, it documents uh, the uPortal REST APIs. Uh, and it also includes a, a simple client, a simple UI for um, sort of inspecting, invoking those UIs and for viewing uh, the responses. It makes it much easier. Uh, it, it, this is sort of a, a developer facing feature. It makes it uh, much easier to uh, develop new components or update components that, that interact with these uh, APIs, as well as, you know, even just to discover what APIs are available. It's kind of kind of a long list. Anyway, uh, yeah, the next item I want to cover is a bit broad. It's kind of a mix of items, but there is a lot of emerging interest in, uh, in content matching, in basically driving the content of users' layouts in the portal, or I, you know, I guess I should say users' content in the portal uh, based on matching strategies and especially pluggable uh, matching strategies. Uh, there are a number of inputs or, uh, you know, a number of uh, elements to this, uh, you know, matching that are being discussed. Some of them are, are more simple. Some of them are more complex. Uh, we certainly want to use things like user attributes and uh, user group affiliations to do, you know, to, to associate content with, you know, with users. Uh, we also want to use portlet metadata, things from the portlet publication uh, record, uh, the kind of things that you might manage in the portlet manager. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, the, sort of the more interesting or forward-looking, um, uh, you know, matching that we're looking to do, the more forward-looking piece of this overall puzzle is to perform matching based on 
learning analytics data. Uh, in this, you know, this vision, uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, kind of a, a, an interaction and a collaboration between uh, several components, not just the portal. Uh, we're looking at a collaboration between an LRS, a uh, learning record store, uh, you know, learning analytics speak for uh, essentially a database of historical usage data. Another component in this overall architecture is a, a data processing engine, which we are looking to prototype uh, in the very near future. And then, of course, uh, a, a, another collaborator, another participant in this uh, vision is the portal server, the uPortal service itself. Uh, so I guess next slide, uh, I've got, you know, a, a visual, a graphical depiction of how this learning and analytics integration um, you know will play out as well across the top you can see uh, a number of services on campus that are not the portal uh, that can provide uh, evidence you know sort of learning analytics data evidence of how users are using uh, their services on campus to uh, succeed academically I guess uh, so all of those feed, um, you know, evidence data into the LRS. Uh, uPortal similarly feeds this kind of evidence into the LRS. Uh, in the middle row on the right is our data processing engine. We are looking uh, to prototype this component with Apache Spark. Uh, that's sort of the leading contender for how we will how we will tackle this. The role of the data processing engine, um, you know, you might you might imagine it's for processing the data. It uh, its job is to crunch, you know, tremendous amounts of information uh, from the LRS and from, you know, context around the user and context around content objects in the portal. Uh, in order to arrive at a number of selected or suggested content objects in the portal that we can then plug into uh, the user's layout somewhere on some level uh, automatically. It looks like the chat is progressing, so I'm going to try to catch up. Uh, nope, sorry, uh, I misspoke. Well, uh, don't hold back, folks. Please ask your questions. But go ahead, yeah. So there we are, please ask your questions. Aaron Grant, are there schools using this kind of tech now? Well, we, uh, we don't have the prototype for that yet, but there are schools uh, investing in learning analytics now. There certainly are. Unicon has a unit uh, you know, within it devoted to uh, helping um, schools adopt and implement, you know, LRSs such as Aperio LRW, which stands for Learning Records Warehouse. Uh, so we observe schools making investments in this kind of technology, making investments to capture uh, this kind of information as their students, you know, use computing services on campus. And it seems reasonable uh, to to work on innovative ways where that data can be used and provide value uh, on campus. We are not that far away. Uh, even this week, there is there was a new pull request opened on uPortal itself. It has the, it contains the modest changes uh, that we need to DLM in order to complete this prototype and demonstrate this kind of you know, this kind of process working. It's not finished. Uh, it's a work in progress, but, uh, it, you know, substantial progress is there. What else we got? Just this until we... Questions and answers and then closing. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm the one last speaking, so I will go ahead and say that we've reached that point in the presentation where we, uh, we're counting on you to tell us what you think of the things that we've been telling you uh, or anything else so that we can, you know, uh, tell you what we know uh, before closing out the session. 
I see several connections, so I can only imagine there are more things on your mind. I haven't heard uh, a whole lot from UW. Uh, anything that uh, Mr. Petro or Mr. Helwig you want to add to the UPortal Home uh, discussion? Question that just popped up. What are you guys planning on for improving Shibboleth integration? Ah, that's an excellent question. Uh, Aaron, thank you for asking. That would have been worth mentioning uh, even when we were on that slide. So we're uh, in the community and at Unicon, we are attempting to move aggressively toward a, uh, a future that is more container-based or at least or container-oriented. Uh, our existing support for Shibboleth as an authentication strategy is based on um, mod shib, uh, all the documentation, all of the, you know, sort of the, the typical way that we implement uh, shibboleth based authentication uh, is based on mod shib, which is an Apache HTTPD uh, module. Uh, so therefore, our, our support for shibboleth is based on running the Apache web server in connection with your uPortal. And that that is fine. There really isn't a problem with that. But as we move towards uh, running, doing more uPortal in containers, especially Docker, uh, it would be nice not to have to uh, include uh, the Apache web server in the containers. So we are looking to to leverage something like Spring Security or uh, you know sort of direct SAML support. Uh, in uPortal, in the uPortal container, in the uPortal um, JVM, so that we don't, so that having the Apache web server isn't a requirement. Uh, excellent. Uh, uPortal Home is due for another incubation call. Uh, I imagine, you know, it's the first month after the holidays. It's time to, uh, I know in several initiatives that I'm connected with, we're just sort of gathering our wits and, and doing our planning. Uh, I don't know which day or what time that will be scheduled for, but if it perhaps could be uh, not tremendously early in the western half of the U.S., uh, I, I would love to attend. All right, I approve of that focus tremendously. Uh, Andrew Petra says that there is a focus on accessibility. Uh, it is you know, it's too early to say too much about it, but it is uh, increasingly likely that Unicon will um, uh, attempt to throw a bit of energy at accessibility in New Portal Home. So I see uh, I see BYU and Kansas on the call. Any thoughts from um, uh, you know schools we haven't heard from yet? All right, uh, I am not seeing um, too much else. Uh, Stephen or Allison, you want to you know, say anything parting? Yeah, I would just like to say thank you for everyone that is in attendance today. As I mentioned, this will be my last quarterly briefing. I now pass the torch on to Allie. Allie, you can close out our briefing for quarter four, 2017. All right, well, um, I will say, first of all, I'm happy to be part of the team. Um, it will be an interesting transition as I try to get up to speed on all the different things that are going on. Uh, thank you for letting me join in and listen in on this one and not throw me into the fire and have me facilitate the very first one I'm on. Uh, but next time, um, you will be hearing more from me, I imagine. Nice to virtually meet some of you. I know some of you I know already or I've talked to uh, or I've met virtually already, so I look forward to uh, getting to know you all. Excellent. Well, on that positive note, let's go ahead and close it out. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.